the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord Our Gospel passage for this Sunday is taken from the Gospel of St. Mark. We have been reflecting on sharing in the mission of God, participating in the very mission of God revealed to us in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is fundamentally God's mission, but what a blessing for us to be called to share, to be co-workers of God in the fulfillment of God's mission. That was the experience of Amos in the first reading. He was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. By training, he was not a prophet, but God called him and asked him to share in God's mission to call the people back to justice. Of course, there was some opposition to him, but what mattered for Amos was he was sharing in God's missionary action. In the second reading, St. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Ephesians that God has a mission of reconciling heaven and earth in Jesus Christ in offering redemption, peace, reconciliation. And God invites us to be part of that mission. But first, God equips us with blessing, with grace, with the calling, with the Word of God, and with the Spirit, equipping us so that we can be God's co-workers in the fulfillment of God's mission. And what is expected of us, according to St. Paul, is a witness of life, holiness, a blameless life that will make people recognize that we are working for God. And through us, hopefully, people may turn to God and praise God's glory. So not just work, not just activity, but the quality of life that will remind people of God. Now the Gospel. Jesus, the one sent by the Father, sends the Twelve. Already here, during His public ministry, and not after the resurrection, He sends them two by two. And the thing that strikes us all the more is Jesus shares with his disciples whom he knew very well. They were slow in learning. They were also quite little in faith. Some of them were not good listeners. Some were quick to judge. Some were ambitious. This band of 12 very weak students and disciples he makes them share in his mission and gives them authority to preach God's word and to cast out evil spirits. Authority that comes from the Father to preach God's word and to perform the healing that many people so badly needed the liberation from evil. From a purely human, managerial, administrative perspective, you would say 
Jesus is making a mistake here, a wrong move on the part of Jesus. How many of our bosses would allow people who have not been tested and who have not passed the qualification requirements to share in their authority? No, no, no. But we are talking about a different teacher, Jesus who, out of mercy and compassion, is not ashamed and is not scandalized to choose weak people like the Twelve and with full trust empowers them, equips them with his own authority so that they can go on mission. And the mission is preach the word and cast out the evil one. Now, clear vision, clear gift to perform the mission. But Jesus also had some instructions. How would he want them to go? Imagine being given authority. If I were a Peter, if I were Andrew, if I were John, James, <laughs> If I were Bartholomew, if I were Judas, I would go around bragging, hey, huh? I have authority. And not just any authority, the authority of the Word of God and the authority to cast out demons. But to make sure that they would be focused on mission and not self-promotion, Jesus instructs them, you will go, but do not bring food no traveling bag, not a coin in your purse, in your belts. You can only bring sandals so that you can walk <laughs> and uh, a walking stick. So a walking stick and sandals so that they could keep on moving. They are being sent on a mission. They're not sent on a tour and they are not being sent in order to just enjoy and take care of themselves. And where they are hosted, they should remain. They should not look for something more comfortable unless they are rejected, where the Word of God is rejected. So, with full authority, you must be simple, humble, when you participate in God's mission and be generous not in giving money which you should not bring not in bringing clothing which you should not bring be generous in sharing the Word of God and the power of Jesus to heal and to cast out demons what a dignity what a blessing to share in God's mission but make sure, let us make sure that we do not stifle the power of that mission by being proud and self-centered. Let the power of Jesus' word and the power of Jesus to cast out demons shine forth by being simple, humble missionaries and co-workers of Jesus. I remember when I did volunteer work for the missionaries of charity in their home for the homeless and the dying in Washington, D.C. Now, the first time I was asked to accompany a dying person who was HIV positive, I was thinking of tools that I needed in order to accompany him. Like, maybe I needed to light a candle. Maybe I needed some background music. Maybe I needed this or that. No, actually I was confused. I did not know how to perform my mission. But then, a lowly sister just told me, just read some passages of the Word of God to the dying and just be there so that he knows he is with Jesus and with the brother. That was how Jesus did it. He brought his word, God's word, 
and His healing presence. That's how to participate in His mission. The Word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.